Rob here from Unimedia and in this video we're going to be talking about images, so stay tuned. At Unimedia we help companies to grow and thrive using the latest tools, tricks and marketing techniques. From websites to online marketing, automated sales funnels, social media and much more. We're always releasing new content on our YouTube channel, so make sure you click the like, subscribe and notification button to make sure that you don't miss out. Just before we get going, I want to tell you about an exclusive offer we have on at the moment. We're giving away free access to our paid Hub Uno platform to the first 50 people that click the link in the description. We're going to be putting this link in the description of all of our videos, so make sure that you get in there as quick as you can. Within Hub you know, we have created over 100 training videos in 13 courses, including a course on how to build a website using Elementor. You'll also find recorded webinars and a host of other free content, so remember to click the link in the description. Let's get on with the video. Hello and welcome to this video. We are going to be talking about the images element of Elementor. Before we begin then, I've got a page layout of Elementor full width. I've got one section here with one column in and I've changed the background color of the section to blue. To get back to our elements then, we just need to click the grid here. The first thing we need to do then is go to our image tile and drag it into our column. In this video, we're gonna go through content and style. A lot of the advanced features, as you can see here, um, have their own separate videos, so I, I suggest you go and check those out. Of course, we do have our margin and padding options here. We'll come back to those at the very end of the video. For now, let's go to content then. Before we really begin then, I suggest uploading a couple of images to your media library. I've already done that, so let's add one into here. So let's click, and this will be the image I put in. This is Dan and I in front of our first office. Over here on the right, we've got alt text, that's for SEO. We won't go through that in this video. We've got the title of the image, and we've got our caption, Dan and Rob in front of their first office. Let's insert media then, and it appears here. So we can change the size of our image. We've got the thumbnail 150 by 150. This is in pixels normally. Medium 300 by 300. And we've got various sizes. Uh, we can change the size in a moment using style. So we probably will do that. I'm going to keep it on full for now. And that's the image basically in its full dimensions. We've got alignment left, center and right. I'm just going to stick with center. We've also got caption options. So we've got the attachment caption. So that's the caption I mentioned just a moment ago. Or we can use a custom caption and we can uh, put that in here. So Rob and Dan. And if we're not sure about that, we can always switch back as it remembers the two captions. I'm gonna stick with the default. We can also make this image link then. We can make it have a, a light box if we wanted to when we click on it, like so. Let's not have that for now though. Uh, let's use a custom URL and we want to make it link to our home page, uh, unimedia.com. So there's a couple of extra settings here. Um, open a new window, that's pretty important. If we have this ticked, then it means that when they close that window that you've sent them to, they'll be back on your website. We've also got this uh, add no follow. So that basically tells search engines to not pass any link authority from your page to other websites um, that you're linking to. I'm going to keep that on tick for now. It doesn't matter. That is the content section for the image element. I'm going to stop for a moment so you can pause the video and add your own image and play around. And then in a moment, we are going to go through the style of the image. Okay then, so let's go to the style tab at the top. And we've got quite a few options to get through here. So we've got our width in percent here. Uh, we do have PX as well in VW, but uh, let's stick with percent. So we could have that 100%, we could have 50. Let's show you how max width works. So this means we'll cap the width up to a max of let's say 50. This means even if we have the max width or the, the width here selected at 100, it won't go any more than 50%, as you can see there. I'm just going to remove that for now. Uh, let's just set the normal width to uh, 58 will do. 
Okay, so now we've got two options here uh, to go through. We've got normal and hover. So this kind of states how you want the image to appear when it's not being interacted with. And then if you go into hover, that'll be the settings that you want the image to take on when someone hovers their mouse over the image. So let's go to normal first. Let's have the opacity at uh, around 50 or 0.5. And I'm going to have a black and white uh, CSS filter here. So CSS filters, you could have it blur. In fact, let's have it on blur for now. Uh, let's saturate it down to black and white. Now let's go over to our hover options. By the way, just feel free to play around with these because you can always click back to default to remove them. Let's go to hover. And I want the opacity to be full when I hover over the image. We'll check this out in a moment. CSS filters, I want the image to return back to its normal state and that's what these are set to at the moment. We've also got transition duration. So this is how long it will take for your image to change between normal and hover. I'm going to put it at max for now. We've also got hover animation. So when you hover over it, your mouse can do something a little bit quirky so it can grow, shrink, pop. Uh, play around with these, but use them sparingly because they can look a little bit cheesy if you go overboard with them uh, because you can do this with quite a lot of elements on your website. I'm just going to go with grow for now. So let's check out our image when we hover our mouse over it. There we go. Now we're going to move on to border uh, because we've blurred it. It looks a bit funny. So I'm going to uh, just remove everything we've done basically and bring it back to full opacity. Let's add our border then. So we've got our drop down. We've got a solid border. We could have a double. We have dotted dashed and groove. I'm going to go with solid. Uh, we like thick white borders with Uno, so I'm going to put 10 into our width and color white. There is a separate video for a color picker tool. Go and check that out if you haven't already. So for now, I'm going to click white and close that window. So we've also got border radius and this basically rounds our corners as you can see. I'm going to remove that for now because we like nice sharp corners. We can also add a box shadow. There's the default box shadow there. We can change the color of it if we like and transparency. But for now, we'll leave it on default. We also have caption options. We've got left, center, right and justified in terms of alignment. I'm going to keep it on centered. We've got text color again, another video to show you how to use this. I'm going to go with default white. Background color. As you can see, this applies to the whole area of the caption. Um, so let's just go with a try and find an orange that might work. There you go. We'll just go with that for now. Close that. Typography. Again, there is another video showing you the details of this tool. I'm just going to quickly select our font family. Change the size. I don't, uh, I'm going to change the weight to 300. I'm going to, I don't want to decorate it with anything fancy. We've got line height, so that just makes this a little bit thicker. There we go. And letter spacing, which is the spacing between the characters of the letters. We're not going to bother with that for now. Let's close this window. We've also got a text shadow. Uh, I don't tend to use shadows with text, so I'm not going to have that. I'm just going to click back to default, but feel free to play around with those settings if you want to. And then we have spacing, which is the space between the image and the caption itself. That's pretty much all there is to it. Then I'm just going to go to advanced. I'm just going to click padding. I'm going to put percent. Uh, I'm just going to put 10% on just to show you how padding works. There you go. Um, that has surrounded that with some padding. Like the end of all of our videos, don't forget to click the green update button when you are done.